All right. This next comic, recently back into the comedy scene, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Steve Zahn. Play show for everybody. Everybody's creepy neighbor. That is not the guy I want to see outside of my bedroom window. Actually, I don't want to see any guy outside of my bedroom window. That'd be kind of weird. Oh, as Clay mentioned, I was taking a little break from comedy. Actually, I was off uh, in the Olympics. What? What a fat guy can't be an Olympian? No, I was in uh, archery. Actually, really, I was just hunting for dinner. <laughs> Let me tell you, wooden targets don't taste that great. But it's kind of weird. You wouldn't think Great Britain would know what archery is. What? Archery? The bloody hell is that? Is that like a McDonald's eating contest or something? I know that's the worst British accent ever. I know. <laughs> you gotta tell me. Ugh. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, I saw recently they uh, stores have started selling uh, duct tape with college team logos on it. This is in case you perform what's called the Alpha Breaker, and that and what that is is when you get too in, into your favorite college sports team game and you wind up breaking something, you'll have that duct tape. <laughs> There's the awkward joke of the night. Here's a random thought. You know somebody you know you don't want to see in HD? Seal. <laughs> I just heard of that's funny. Yes, that's what I was going for. Uh, anyway, I was uh, scrolling on Facebook a few weeks ago because I have no life. And um, a girl that I'm friends with on there is pregnant. And you know how girls like to take pictures of their pregnant stomachs every day it seems like well I was on there and I looked at the caption and I thought it said 16 and pregnant and maybe it's that little problem called ADD I don't know but uh, it really said six, 16 weeks pregnant so after that I did what any good American should do I turned off MTV because I realized that's what's wrong with America. Too many, too many things that shouldn't be getting glorified is getting glorified. You may agree with me, you may not, but fuck you, that's my opinion. Uh, actually, I, that was all new stuff that I was doing. But um, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record here because... Uh, Ray just mentioned something about it, but uh, Jay Medicine Hat was a great guy. I had the privilege of having a nice conversation with him when he was here a couple months ago, and um, he's truly going to be missed to everybody. Jay Medicine Hat, thank you very much. Yeah. That was Steve Sonic. Uh, this next comic is very funny. She's a member of Fool's Day Comedy, and she's a very good friend of mine. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Adrian Bowman. All right. This next comic coming to the stage, when I first met her, I thought, just shut the fuck up. I never thought that I could ever like this person, but I have grown to love her. And she is very funny. Please welcome to the stage, Miss April Downey. Yeah, give it up for Clay Shope, everybody. Most eloquent host ever. Um, so, I wasn't going to do anything new at all, but I got a phone call, or a text rather. So I said, hey, when you get a chance, we need to talk. And that shit never ends well at the fuck all fucking ever. And so he told me that somebody said something and some people were involved and it was a thing. And so it led me to the conclusion that I can't wish death on this bitch because she's pregnant, but I can wish things like chronic diarrhea or like collapsed labias on her because I think that would be intact, you know? Or if I wish like a third nipple on her spawn, I think that would be justifiable. I just wanted to say that out loud. 
But um, I did have a learning experience, actually, earlier. Um, I found out where whores come from. They come from Target on aisle six. I, mean, I swear to God, I was going there to pick up some wire hangers and duct tape. And to get to this part of the store, I had to pass like the kids' clothing section. And they had a pair of Daisy Duke like booty shorts with fishnet stockings sewn into them in a size 2T, people. All right, and this section of clothes is right beside the fucking lingerie. Is that a before and after diagram right there? Is that how this is fucking going to work today? It, I, it was irritating because my spawn wears a fucking size 2T and I punch her in her face and she was wearing this shit. It's bad. But, um... My faith, Ray was talking about fucked up families. My family is ridiculous. Like, they're degenerates and they're racist and they're bad. But my dad was a Marine. And God damn it, I love my nation, so fuck yeah, I want to be like him. Okay? So I tried to join the Marines. You know, I got the fucking ink and all that. I tried to join, and he found out because my recruiter came to knock on the door. And he's in dress blues, real nice. My dad said he's got to get presentable. You know, so he answered the door in tidy whities and a sawed off shotgun. And the recruiter said, Mr. Dowdy, I want to talk to you today about your daughter serving with the finest men in this nation to defend your freedom. And his response was, eh, she's got AIDS, but you can have her if you want her. Worst promoter ever, right? So I didn't get to join the Marines, but I figured, because I'm so patriotic, if I can't fight with the best, I can fuck them. Not like the government, but like in a good way, like bent over, hands on my ankles, so I'm like, sir, yes, sir! And I figured that'd be my way of giving back to everything that they've done for us, you know? And I tried to date this guy one time who wanted to join the Marines. And he didn't make the cut, so he's all upset. And his, his reasoning was they need to let me join because I bleed green, you know? I'm meant to do this. And I couldn't help but look at him and say, Sir, if you're bleeding green, that's probably an infection that you want to get checked out. And it doesn't automatically make you a patriot, more of like a predator. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't date long either. Uh, but I did, speaking of things that I've learned, I have realized that throughout history, like the further west you go, the richer you get. Right? Like Christopher Columbus, he went west, accidentally got rich as shit. Right? And the United States as a whole, the east coast is shit. Where's the money at? The west coast, Hollywood, LA, bang. There you go. Especially in Richmond. Like this is the epitome. Because you go to the bottom and it's like damn near poverty. And then you go down broad, hit west broad, run into the sh uh, short pump and you see old white money that came over on the Mayflower, you know, like still reaping what the slaves sowed. And these are the assholes that get mad when black people talk about reparations. You know, fuck it, it's 2012. Black folks should have reparations. Maybe not 40 acres and a mule, because eh, but definitely a big screen TV, a couple packs of Newports and some rosé, goddammit. And shit, if you a real boss, some Moscato, huh. I think that's how it's gonna go down in 2012. That's how I'm gonna give back. You can laugh louder than that, it's awesome, it's funny. Um, alright, so by round of applause, how many people here have been called an ass? Okay, okay, by round of applause, how many people here have been called a dick? Alright, you guys know the difference between the two? A dick is usually more straightforward and covered in shit, not full of it. But that was very, that was accurate, uh -huh. okay. Well then, I did a show not too long ago, and as you can tell, I have no filter at all. And I'm meeting and greeting afterwards, and this woman came up to me, and it turns out she's a preacher's wife, right? And she gives me this God-fearing, like, congratulations for following your dreams, glory be to God. And she said, but you spew too many profanities. You know, you should clean it up. And my response to her was, ma'am, I don't spew profanities. I enunciate them, clearly, like a fucking lady. And so, needless to say, I wasn't invited back to the Crackers for Christ Gala at Mount Zion next year. I was frowned upon, didn't go over well. But I have decided that if I were to run for president, that, like, my campaign front would be, like, dealing with overpopulation, right? And how to, and how to strategize against that and prevent that from happening. And I think my campaign motto would be, ignorance lives because wisdom refused to swallow. Do your duties, America. That's my time. Thank you very much. April Dowdy, everybody. That's right. Uh, this next comic coming up is very funny. Uh, he's been at Clash of the Comics, the Funny Boone. Seen him all around Richmond. He's our first uh, black comic.
comic of the night. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome for Mr. Israel. What's up, Dion? Hey. Y'all can do better than that shit, so what's up, Dion? Shit! Hey. I'm not black, I'm a nigga. <laughs> I see, see, I see, white people laughing at that shit. If white people laugh at the N word, then you know you have a good set, you know? That, that shit's gonna go pretty fucking well. That's why I use the word, I just, you know, for a fact. You know, I really don't mean that, you know, I'm African American to the heart, to the core. God bless America. <laughs> Man, I'm glad you got that shit. Let's move it on. Colorado was some bullshit, right? That that fucking shoot. And white people, I love you for this shit. You guys will kill masses of people and claim that insanity shit that's quick as a motherfucker. I, I love that shit. Like, boom, boom, boom. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> I was tripping. I was on some bullshit. <laughs> you know, I love that shit, man. Guess what? Dude gonna get off. Watch him take six months in jail. Go home and eat lollipops. I ain't bullshit. Watch his ass gonna get off. He the fuck gonna get off. If that man met my ass doing that shit, they'll keep my black ass during Black History Month, nigga. I'm trying to tell you, oh, Martin Luther King birthday, shit. I have a dream, bitch, sit down in the chair, we gonna fry your ass today. <laughs> That's the dream we gonna have, we gonna kill your black ass shit. That's the dream I'm having right now, motherfucker. I ain't bullshit to you, but, uh, you know, I love going to concerts. Anybody ever been to, like, the Jazz Festival, Main Mart? Been there? Nice, nice, nice. But concerts, period. The thing about it, it's not really the show. But it's the, it's the after effect, it's the other shit that goes with the show, like drunk people singing. That, that shit's funny to me, like, it was like, I, I, you know, if anybody likes R&B music, old soul R&B music, it was a group called The Whispers, you know that song? Rock, steady, steady, rockin' out. Y'all know that song? Anybody ever heard that fucking song? All right then, that's the group that was on. So it's, it's this old, there's these like older like African American ladies and shit in the background just saying, you know, and the guy's name was like Smokey or some shit, whatever, like, Smokey, you better sing that motherfucker, Smokey, sing that shit, nigga, say it! You know, I'm like, damn, I'm like, are you fucking him? I'm like, what, do you have to say it like that? I mean, now, do you have to holler like that? I mean, shit, I mean, you just didn't spray all that spit and shit on my fucking neck and shit. Bitch, I took a shower already, please, I don't need another one, thank you, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, that sounds beautiful, doesn't it? But you know, I realized too, you know, I'm a custodian, uh, janitor, meaning that I clean shit, so I think of a lot of shit, so I talk shit, right? So, you think of a lot of shit when you clean toilets, you really do. You think of a lot of stuff, clean toilets. And you know, I realized something, you know, you know, we talk about prostitutes, we give them a bad name, we say they're terrible and everything, because they sell their body for what they want. But if you think about it, everybody's been a hoe for something in their life. I don't give a damn who you are. You sold some part of yourself to get what you are. I don't give a fuck. Okay, case in point, women. You get pulled over by a cop. You want a low-cut shirt, cleavage showing. You're not gonna tell me you're not gonna push your titties up just to get, get out of that damn ticket. You, when you trying to tell me you wouldn't do that shit? If you got a $50 ticket and you, you the cop say, look, ma'am, you're speeding, you're in violation, that, that's it, I have to write your ticket. I push, if I was the one, I put some double D's up and said, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, shit. And get out of that damn ticket, there's nothing wrong with that. You just sold yourself a little bit to get what you wanted, get out of the ticket. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, that's not fucking funny, move right along. <laughs> nah, I don't give a damn, I don't give a damn to do that. That shit was funny to me. I thought it was uh, fucking hilarious in the van when I was driving that shit. Shit. I like, ma'am, I like the bar, I like the way you, you look, you look real nice. I like to see a white woman with a nice, curvy, curvaceous ass. Because most white women don't have a nice, curvaceous ass. I'm just being real real with you. But you had a real nice body. I mean, God bless you. I, I like th I like women with some meat on the bone. You know, I like them skinny ass women. You try to hug them and they feel like you're gonna stab in your ass or some shit like that. You know, and dude, what's the dude that? Greg? I like you, dude. You look like the dude off on PBS that was painting the um, pictures and shit. I love that dude. Did you remember the dude off PBS that used to paint the fucking pictures and shit? I mean, I do, I love that dude, man. I love him, man, because know what he do? He taught me about art, man. He taught me about art. He go, he get up there like, well, we're about to pay a treat right now. This is a nice, pretty brown treat we're painting right now. And look, it's got a nice color. I'm going to take some green and put it right here. I mean, he pushed his sleep out the while, but he was, he was a real talented motherfucker. I'm trying to tell you. He's real talented and shit. I ain't lying, man. But you know, I'm going to end with this, you know, I'm going to end with this uh, Christian joke. Uh, my mom took me to go shopping for, um, bras and panties when I was young. And uh, I don't know what it was. I mean, most mothers take you shopping, you know, for, you know, groceries and stuff like that. She, she, she takes you shopping for, you know, bras and panties and shit. And, it's, and it kind of messed my mind up. Because when, when you do things for kids, you don't realize the effect it's going to have on them later. You know, and every parent does this. And no parent is perfect. 
But so I'm going to the store or whatnot and everything like that. And so mom, I said, mommy, what's this? She said, son, that's a C cup. I said, oh, C cup, okay, fine. I said, mommy, what's this? I said, it's a double D cup. I said, fine. So now I'm programming my mind to look at women and judge what size they are. And that's, I feel dirty by doing it, but it's my fucking mom's fault for doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's really bad because now I walk up to them and say, oh, wait, yeah, you are a 38B for a 44B or something like that. I, I can just boom, I can just tell you what you are right now and it's messed up. And the man looking at me like, this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> shit, go back to the East End, motherfucker. <laughs> shit. But uh, that's my time. My name is Israel. God bless. Israel. Great job, man. Um, I want to apologize to all the other comics in the audience tonight because no one can hold a dearer place in my heart, no other comic can hold a dearer place in my heart than this next person about to come to the stage, the gayest straight dude that I know. Please welcome to the stage, Trish Blaine. <laughs>